Hey, what's up, everyone? Scotty Gaines here with editor of HouseOfSparky.com, Brady Vernon. Following Herm Edwards' weekly press conference, we're going to make this short and sweet. We're getting pelted by the by the uh, sprinklers behind us, if you can see. But uh, some not notable things we've got to point out today. JT Daniels, USC starting quarterback, has cleared concussion protocol, so he will be playing Saturday. Herm Edwards today said that it's good for the game, and it's good for USC, and most of all, it's good for football. So, Brady, with Daniels coming back, what, what do we expect to see from the USC offense Saturday afternoon? Obviously, with Daniels, it'll probably be better. We'll don't know if we truly know that because it's been very inconsistent, just like ASC's offense has been. Um, their backup before that, Matt Fink, came into the game against Utah. He broke ribs, so he will be out for the game for sure. Say if Daniels for some reason can't play, the third string, whose name is escaping me, hasn't played a down ever, and he'd be the only active, healthy quarterback. So that could be an issue for USC if something does happen in the Daniels in the game. Yeah, Fink is for sure out. Three broken ribs, like you said. And Jack Sears, the third-string quarterback, actually from San Clemente High School, which is where Sam Darnold went to school. So he's a he's a solid backup and uh, being the third string and Fink not coming back, but he is available to play. We thought he was going to be the starter a few hours ago, but having cleared that concussion protocol. But something interesting about the Trojans, Clay Helton in his time at USC, 19-0, undefeated within the Coliseum. Do you think this, the, um, the Sun Devils can give a, or USC their first loss at the Coliseum and Clay Helton his first loss at the Coliseum? Well, it's going to be tough because, to be fair, a lot better teams have gone to the Coliseum and not gotten a win. Um, but Herm and the guys will probably try to keep the game close, as they have for every single other game. Um, so if that happens, it gives themselves a chance, like they've had every other game. Will they actually execute down to the wire like they did in Michigan State, or will it end up being one of those another one-score losses as we've seen four times this season? I don't know. I do believe that there's a chance because I think both teams are very inconsistent, as is much of the Pac-12 South. You speak inconsistency, and that's something that both teams really have. And uh, ASU and USC both coming off off losses, both at home. And so I, I got to ask you this: Which uh, team now has to win this game more? Is it USC, which just lost to Utah, has been struggling lately, or is it ASU, where they seem to be need to bounce back and get back to 500? We'll go with ASU simply for the fact that. If they lose this game, I think their chances are just done if they're not already for the Pac-12 South. Um, USC, if they were to lose, I think they still have an outside shot just because they probably could win out like with their schedule, depending how it is. But I think ASU just needs it as like a confidence booster. You don't If you go 3-5 and five with the remaining schedule, you're putting yourself at risk to go just miss a bowl game, which is that good or bad? I don't really know if you really want to play in the Cheez-It Bowl. It is a great name. Great name. Great name. But being three and five just sets yourself up for failure for not qualifying for a bowl. I know like people probably want that. I, Manny Wilkins for his last season probably wants to play another game as much as he can. So yeah, I think ASU needs this one a little bit more than at USC. All right, we'll have to see and uh, wait wait to see what happens this Saturday. You or ASU heading over to the Coliseum to play USC. That's a 12:30 p.m. kickoff on Saturday, and House of Sparky will be there, and we'll see you then.